Even when you're not lounging at the beach, sand is everywhere in your everyday life. It's in your toothpaste, the house you live in, the roads that you drive on, even on the device that you're using to watch this video. Sand is such a critical resource for daily life that there's even a black market of illegal sand mining working to fulfill the worldwide demand for this grainy substance. And not only can you find it everywhere, it only has one defining feature, its size. There are some amazing structures that sand can be made of. It can be made of small green minerals, volcanic rocks, fish poop, or dead skeletons. With so much to learn about sand, today's video is going to tell you more about how this tiny beach hero forms in nature, how we use it every day, and the amazing science that makes sand appear in so many spectacular colors. Sounds fantastic. Ooh. Let's explore more today on Nine Worlds. When it comes to sand, size is all that matters. That is because sand is defined by geologists in terms of particle size as any mineral between 0 0.065 millimeters and 2 millimeters in diameter. That's about the width of a nickel. So anything smaller than that is silter clay. Anything larger than that is gravel or stone. That is tiny. <laughs> sand is like a mini geological time capsule. Sand that you're relaxing on on the beach is probably millions of years old. Eroding rivers, oceans, lakes, and all that, it's seen a lot over the years. There are two general types of sand, mineral and organic. Mineral is the most common, and it's formed by geological forces. The composition of the sand at your favorite beach probably varies because of the rock and the forces that created it. Most sand is made of the mineral quartz, which typically begins as part of the rock granite. Weathering breaks down larger rocks into quartz and feldspar. The feldspar usually dissolves away more quickly, leaving the quartz behind to weather away over time, tumbling down streams, being tossed around by the wind as it becomes smaller and smaller until it reaches the size of sand. The tan color of most sand beaches comes from the mineral iron oxide, which colors the quartz a light brown. But there are many other colors of sand to be found from many other minerals. For example, the pink sand at Pink Coral Reef Dune State Park in southern Utah is quartz that has been stained by rusting hematite, or iron. There's also black sand, which is made by eroding volcanic materials such as lava and basalt. This is commonly found in Hawaii. There's even a rare green sand, which is only in four beaches in the entire world. This sand gets its color from the mineral olivine, which is within it. There's even white sand that looks like snow, such as what you find at White Sands National Park. The white sand dunes here are made of 98% pure gypsum. Now, gypsum sand is considered rare because unlike other mineral forms of sand, gypsum is water soluble. It dissolves in water like sugar and iced tea. So it's not that easy to keep around in sand form, but we can use this property of gypsum to shape it into other forms. In fact, Plaster of Paris, a product found in almost every hardware store to repair walls and make casts, is mostly made of gypsum. Check out this video right here if you want to see some cool molds that we did with Plaster of Paris and beach sand. Gypsum in action. Yeah. Hawaii also has some of these white sand beaches, but it's not made of gypsum. And it's not made of quartz. What is it made of? Fish poop! Parrotfish poop, to be exact. Parrotfish scrape algae, which is their favorite food, off of rocks and dead coral using their beak-like mouths. And then their gruts grind up the calcium carbonate in it. And then, when they poop it out, it is sand poop. Sand poop. Yeah. And one parrotfish can excrete 2,000 pounds of sand poop in a year. That's a cow's worth of sand poop. Poop. Sand. Poop. <laughs> you can find another example of a biological sand beach in Bermuda, where the pink beaches are made of limestone with the remains of a tiny invertebrate called the Red Forum. These creatures build tiny red skeleton homes to protect their gelatinous bodies in the open ocean. And it's the remains of these skeletons that turn the sand pink. 
Now, while organic sand may be a colorful addition to your beach vacation, when it comes to everyday use of sand in industry, quartz is the grain of choice. And in particular, sharp sand or sand that still has jagged edges is the most useful. This is the sand you most often find in riverbeds or at the beach, and it's appropriately named marine sand. Now, sand you find in places like the desert tends to be very rounded from being transported long distances. So this rounded sand just isn't as useful in products like concrete that need sharp angular sand that interlocks like pieces of a puzzle. The most common industrial use of sand is concrete, which is 75% sand. And we use a lot of concrete. It takes an average of 200 tons of sand to build a house. A mile of road is about 15,000 tons of sand! That's a lot of sand. A lot of sand. But there's many other uses for sand besides concrete, actually, such as drainage in agriculture to help filter the air in the water. Sand casting is a common form of molding metal, and sand is a key component in making glass and electronic parts. It also may be in your toothpaste as an abrasive and was even heated and poured on invading marauders as a weapon in medieval times. So remember, next time you sit back and relax on your beach vacation, remember that you're on top of the one of the most amazing things in the world, sand. Subscribe, like, and watch our other videos.